Jacob Warfield. I'm the publisher of City Biz, and I'm honored today to interview the CEO of GupShop, Larud Seth. Welcome, Larud. Hey, Edwin. Thanks for having me. Today, uh, GupShop announced a $240 million follow-on funding that included Fidelity Management and Research, Tiger Global, Think, Malabar. This followed a $100 million funding uh, back in April from Tiger Global. Can you walk us through the last six months of funding in your life? Oh, I know it's it's been crazy. You know, when it rains, it pours. Uh, because before this before this year, our last funding round was like ten years ago, um, and that is a story in you know perseverance and sort of a quite a bit a roller coaster ride. But I think we survived. We hung on, and I think we kept innovating, kept building our products, and finally, you know, there was strong and steady growth. But a lot of it was also accelerated. Uh, by new technology trends in the messaging industry, by the pandemic, which is driving digital transformation for a lot of industries. So yeah, I think business grew and uh, I think it attracted investor interest. Uh, in fact, the opportunity that we see ahead of us is is massive. And uh, I think with this new capital that we've raised, uh, you know, the, the first close was 100 million, the next close was 240. Now, some of it is going to be used for company growth and development. Some of it, actually, we are doing a, a secondary purchase from old investors and from employees. Uh, but sort of net-net, I think we are extremely well positioned to grow from here, uh, to take advantage of the, uh, you know, to sort of uh, go capture the huge opportunity that lies ahead of us to invest in product, in go-to-market, international expansion, and so on. And so can you provide a snapshot of the company today, messages per month, some of the key partnerships, uh, your footprint, some of your key clients, and if you don't mind sharing uh, your annual revenue? Sure. I think, uh, you know, we handle about, uh, so, so Gupshup is a conversational messaging platform, right? Businesses use our platform to send uh, messages to their customers. And not just sort of one-way notifications, but it can also be two-way conversational interactions, right, to, to handle for marketing, for commerce, and for support, customer support. Um, we handle, our, our platforms handle about six to seven billion messages per month, right? So it's a very high volume number. Uh, we have partnerships uh, to, to enable this service. We have partnerships with mobile operators, with handset manufacturers, and with messaging apps like WhatsApp and Instagram and so on as well. Um, I think our geographical footprint, you know, we uh, our core base of operations is India, but we are in a, at least, uh, a, we have physical, uh, we have teams in at least a dozen other countries uh, in Latin America, uh, in Europe, uh, in Southeast Asia and so on, uh, in the US, of course. Um, and, and I think we continue, uh, but our products and services are available globally. Right, even if we don't have teams there, our services are available online, and so on. Our key clients typically are, uh, you know, sort of uh, e-commerce companies, uh, uh, banking and financial service companies, education, ed tech companies, and so on. Basically, everybody that's leveraging uh, technology for engaging their customers, uh, you know, are uh, clients of Gupshop. And our revenue, I mean, what we shared, you know, we exited last year at $150 million revenue run rate, and we continue to grow uh, this year as well. And can you drill uh, into what your plans for the funding are? Uh, is there a, a new product, any new products on the pipeline? Oh, absolutely. I think, uh, so, you know, first and foremost, I think uh, our company has always focused on innovation-led growth, right? And innovation comes from product research and development. So we are going to, uh, you know, that's sort of the first area of investment and focus. We have more than doubled our product and engineering teams. Uh, we have scaled up the organization. There's, there's a lot of new, uh, you know, both we are rolling out new products as we speak, as well as a, a very active pipeline uh, going forward as well. Um, and it's really just filling out this vision of uh, conversational messaging, right? So if you think about it, uh, the, think of the different layers of the stack, right? At the at the base layer are sort of basic messaging notifications. Like you say, a text, send a text message. A business sends a text message to a consumer saying, you know, uh, your flight is booked or your package is arriving or, you know, here's a notification about uh, you need to pay your bill, things like that, right? And then the next step up is conversational experiences, which are two-way back and forth uh, conversations. So we provide tools to businesses 
uh, to, to build these sort of rich conversational experiences as well. And then uh, in some cases, we specialize that by industry, right? So tools for banking, uh, for e-commerce, for maybe restaurants and retail, different categories um, as, as well. And, and there's sort of many different, you know, there's also new channels emerging, um, you know, WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook Messenger. So we provide, um, we provide sort of the APIs and all the plumbing and tooling to uh, enable all of this. But in addition to product, of course, we are also investing a lot in go to market, which means sales and marketing activities in many different countries, uh, expanding coverage uh, of different geographies and, and different industry verticals. And then lastly, of course, you know, uh, we are also exploring M&A, uh, potentially acquiring companies in adjacent spaces or to fill out some gaps in our product offerings and so on. So, you know, lots to be done, keeping us very busy. So how is conversational messaging evolving? I think the whole messaging industry is at a very interesting inflection point, if you will, right? Uh, for the last uh, almost 10 to 20 years now, I think most, uh, you know, businesses have a need to interact with their consumers. And most of the messaging over the last 10, 20 years has been focused on simple, basic text notifications. Uh, but more recently, uh, with newer and richer channels, right, that are based on the internet protocol, these IP-based messaging channels such as such as WhatsApp and Instagram and many others uh, are enabling businesses to now have rich two-way conversations, right? So from a consumer standpoint, it is just as easy to chat with a business as it is to chat with a friend. Uh, and through that process, uh, businesses can do, you know, sort of what's called conversational marketing or conversational commerce or even conversational support, right? Uh, and I think it's a win-win for both. Consumers can get instant real-time ser live service and support uh, while businesses can engage their customers, drive more sales and improve customer satisfaction. So, you know, the, the way it's evolving, uh, the way conversational messages is evolving is, you know, we, we think for businesses, this is the new digital storefront. Every business will have to build conversational experiences. You know, if I may use a quick analogy, it's a little bit like when the web emerged in the mid 90s, where, uh, you know, when, when the web came about, every business had to build a website and not just for one thing, but for every customer touch point, you had to have build a web experience. And even to this day, right, uh, a couple of decades later, businesses are still building better and richer websites. I think in the same way, uh, conversational experiences are the new digital storefront. Every business will have to build this out and they'll have to do it for virtually every customer touch point. So there's a huge sort of market opportunity out there and there's a great need for, for tools and services uh, to be provided. And that's what Gupshop is focused on. So you have a very impressive uh, customer list, including Facebook, Twitter, Google, LinkedIn. Can you tell us about your, some of your clients or maybe give an example of what, you know, how do you work with Twitter, for example? Yeah, so, you know, all of these businesses, um, like I mentioned earlier, the bulk of our fo business is focused on, on India, right? And these businesses have customers in India that they need to engage and notify, right? So... Uh, for example, uh, WhatsApp sends out, uh, you know, what I call one-time passwords uh, for verification when you log into the app for the first time. Or Facebook sends out, uh, you know, reminders saying, hey, your friend has posted a message for you. Do come back and check out the app, right? So they use it for uh, reactivation or, like I mentioned, for security check or for just customer notifications if something's happening to their account, things like that. Right. So, so in general, the, the, the social media companies do send out, uh, text notifications to consumers in India and other parts of the world, uh, to, to engage them. Right. But, but we have, like I said, many other customers. I mean, virtually, um, uh, you know, every major industry, including banking and e-commerce and travel and hospitality, retail, consumer goods, uh, pharmaceutical, you name it. I mean, they, you know, they need to. Virtually every business has a need to engage their customers and the, the, they use our solution for it. So the competitive landscape looks pretty robust. <laughs> uh, the companies such as Twilio and Sense and Calray, how did you break out from uh, your, your co co competitors? 
Yeah, well, you know, the fact that there are a lot of competitors means that there's there's a huge market need and opportunity as well, right? So that's sort of the good part. Now, every company has to decide for itself what it's good at, what it specializes in, and, and what it's the best at, right? I think in case of uh, Gupshop, I think we are always sort of innovation-led, uh, you know, in everything we do, we, we provide, we're always the first to provide uh, new and interesting capabilities. For example, uh, you know, uh, it refers to provide sort of WhatsApp connectivity and so on. We, you know, we were the earliest to enable bot platforms uh, on, a, on our site. Um, we were also, you know, uh, we, we've generally been er- early with every new uh, trend in, in uh, sort of conversational messaging. Um, that's one part of it. The other is we invest a lot in uh, sort of our platforms, the technology uh, for quality of service, right? Uh, the, these platforms, ha- they're mission critical platforms. They have to be enterprise grade. They have to be very reliable and robust. And I think we have built a reputation for for being that. Um, another uh, thing that I'll say is, you know, um, the part of the world that we operate in, these are mobile first ecosystems, right? Countries like India and and then regions like Latin America and Europe and others, um, uh, you know, Africa and such, these are very sort of mobile first. So the kind of customers we talk to and the kind of requirements that we see are very different from what you typically see in developed markets, right? So because, because these mobile first countries, they just leapfrog. I mean, before uh, you know, so call centers or email, the email habit or the web habit was much less before smartphones came around. And therefore, they try to do everything with messaging. So we we really specialize in uh, building messaging and conversational experiences. And I think, you know, are sort of uh, the best and the, the fastest growing company in that space. And and you're seeing that, right? That's why these investors who, who really believe in this uh India as an emerging market and other emerging market sort of growth thesis um, and sort of the fact that our our product, our pricing, our processes are all optimized for these emerging markets uh, more than these other companies that you mentioned. We're here to really t- today talking about your, your financing and uh, where your company is today. But if, if you wouldn't mind going back to your, you were the founder of Elance, which ultimately became Upwork. Can you walk us through that experience in Really tell us what came out of that experience that helped you with your new company. Yeah, I think, you know, Elance was uh, such a long time ago. I founded that about 20 plus, almost 23 years ago. And, you know, Elance then went on to uh, rebranded to Upwork uh, and is now a large public company and quite successful. And, you know, the funny thing is in the early days, uh, it was really hard going, believe it or not, where we were trying to preach remote work uh, to to the world. And uh, many people would say, well, why should I use it? How can I trust somebody uh, remotely and so on, right? And it took, what, 20 years and maybe a pandemic where now it's become conventional wisdom, right? So so I think in that sense, uh, we got that whole experience of, you know, it's it's not easy to evangelize innovative products, even if they're obvious in hindsight, but up front, it takes a lot of effort, a lot of creativity, a lot of innovation to find these these early adopters and find the use cases where it works and how to do it and so on, right? And sometimes you just sort of have to be patient as the, you know, until the tide turns, uh, if you will, right? Uh, it's like the surfing analogy. I mean, you got to wait till the wave arrives, you know, before you can ride it. Uh, so, so I think that was probably the biggest lesson. Uh, same thing at at Gupshop. I mean, it's been a, a very long journey of perseverance um, because, you know, we clearly saw and we believed in the fact that messaging will get smarter and businesses will want to do all these advanced things. That is now, you know, but we were here like many, many years ago uh, and it took a lot of you know, evangelizing to customers to convince them and to create these products and uh, and so on, right? But now that we are here, I think we are seeing the results. Uh, and in fact, we are well poised for even future growth. So I think uh, it's really some of these can be, you know, long journeys. It takes time to build these powerful businesses. But if you have a very clear vision and, uh, and you know, it, if, if it makes sense, then sooner or later, the market will come around to it. And, you know, you got to be uh, prepared 
you continue innovating and preparing the product and so on. So, so ultimately success is when preparation meets opportunity, right? And I think uh, that's worked well for me, both at Elance Upwork as well as at Gupshop. So you're an overnight success, but it just started in 2004, right? Yeah, overnight success, decades in the making. <laughs> so are there any, um, uh, I mean, I read the Forbes article and it really uh, chronicled some of the low, what you, what you call the low lights. Do you want to share some of the low lights and the highlights? Of, of over the last 15 years? Yeah, well, I think at Gupshop, you know, now they're uh, sort of part of our history and, you know, we don't shy away from it uh, because that is actually par for the course, right? That uh, when you when you have an innovative idea and a vision, you know, literally everything has to work out right. And any if any one of them is slightly off, right, that can lead to failure. Uh, so in our case, you know, in the, uh, we saw the power of, text messaging, but we actually first built a, a consumer-focused social networking service, kind of like Twitter, uh, you know, and and the service actually became hugely successful. It grew to about 70 million users in India uh, long before there were any other social networks out there, right? Now, this was in 2007, 8, 9, and so on. Uh, but while it, it was successful in terms of usage, you know, the business model was a challenge because we had to subsidize all these messages and we couldn't sort of put ads in there either for regulatory reasons. So, um, so you know, we had to really face reality, you know, exercise a pivot saying, okay, how do we keep what's working, which is the messaging platform, and how do we change the business model that's not working? And therefore, we focus then on the enterprise side, right, which worked out great. So that was sort of the first big pivot. And then later on, uh, you know, even as business was growing up slowly, but I think we had sort of near death experiences in terms of running out of runway and had to navigate that by cutting costs and sort of managing the team uh, very prudently and, and, and so on. Right. But we, we sort of survived and built a different muscle. And by the way, one unique thing about us as a private company is we are sort of quite profitable. Uh, right. So we sort of turned adversity into opportunity, built up a different skill set, um, you know, focused on on innovating while staying lean. And um, and today, of course, you know, I think it's it's sort of borne itself out. I think the investor support that we have uh, and, you know, the, the new sort of growth opportunities ahead of us, uh, I think now put us in a very, very different place and position. But but, you know, the media usually likes to cover sort of the highlights, uh, but any entrepreneur knows that the journey involves plenty of lowlights and you kind of have to, you know, plow through it and wade through it uh, because it's not, you know, it's not going to be straightforward. Good. I want to thank you for sharing your story. Is there any part of the story that, that you haven't shared that you'd like to share with our readers? Oh, how much time you got? I, I mean, I can go through many, many stories. <laughs> <laughs> it's your time. I'm more, it's more valuable than my time. I know. No, I think, well, let's just say, I mean, we've covered all the highlights of the story. <laughs> so, Rude, I want to thank you for your time. And, you know, it's, it's obviously a, it's a very exciting time for you and the company. And we wish you the best of luck as you move forward. Yeah, no, thank you. And I think I'll, the only thing I'd advise is any business or entrepreneurs that are listening to this, you know, they should really think about conversational messaging and being early adopters of these new experiences. I think it'd be good for business. But yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for listening. Thanks, Baruch.